Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Keith Wen from the New York City Department of Buildings. And uh, I, I actually went through the, uh, the, the agenda uh, early on, and I realized that I'm the only uh, uh, speaker uh, who is the uh, authority having jurisdiction. So uh, I consider myself very brave. Uh, maybe I'm a party pooper here because uh, for the past two days, uh, there's this love fest with this mass timber building. So, but I'm here to uh, expose myself to, to uh, this new material and technology and science. And uh, hopefully I can bring back some useful information uh, to New York. Um, so first of all, um, I want to talk about uh, what we do uh, in New York City as, uh, as the Department of Buildings. We deal with uh, over a million buildings in New York. Uh, we issue over 140,000 permits per year. Uh, these are building permits involving all kinds of construction. Uh, we respond to emergencies as well. We have inspectors for all kinds of things. Uh, 85,000 plus uh, complaints uh, every year. So we're talking about uh, things like unsafe building, uh, illegal occupancies, um, you know, uh, uh, misuse of equipment, uh, or, or even zoning infraction. Uh, we, we, we look at those things. Uh, we, we have more than 80,000 plan review per year, and uh, we issue licenses as well. We issue license to uh, general contractors, site safety managers, uh, concrete safety managers, plumbers, and electricians. So there are all kinds of uh, licenses that we issue. And we do all that with uh, just a little over 1,200 employees. Uh, we all, we're all spread out uh, in uh, all five boroughs, uh, and, but the central office is in Manhattan, and that's where I'm from. So the subject of my discussion today is really from the uh, authority having jurisdiction uh, perspective in terms of reviewing uh, mass timber projects. Uh, the one that we are dealing with right now is the, 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 uh, one of the winners from the U.S. Tall Wood Building Prize Competition. Uh, we are dealing with the East Coast winner, 130-134 Holdings uh, LLC. Uh, the architect is shop architect uh, and the engineer is Arab. Uh, we have been having uh, some initial meetings with them to better understand the project. And the building is supposed to be a residential condominium project, 10 stories tall, uh, 120 feet tall. And it's situated right in the middle of the Big Apple. It's in Manhattan. Uh, it's in the West Chelsea area. And um, it, it, it's, it's facing uh, Hudson River. So if you have been to New York at all, you might know about High Line. Uh, this project is not far from High Line. In fact, I think if you are on the, uh, 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 on the upper stories or even at the lower stories, you might be able to see uh, the High Line already. It's a corner lot, uh, very, uh, it's prime location for sure. Uh, and, 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 you know, High Line becomes this sort of uh, architectural showcase in a way. If you walk through High Line, you can see all kinds of exciting uh, buildings there, so I, I think it's, it's actually a very uh, exciting and smart location for this building. Uh, this is overlooking from the Hudson River side, if uh, you are in a chopper. And uh, looking closer to the building, the overall mapping. And here is the street view. Uh, this is by no means the actual mass massing of the building. This only represents the, the scale of the building. It's supposed to be 10 story tall. So as you can see, it's not really out of context. Uh, we have similar buildings in the neighborhood at about the same height. But of course, none of them are made out of uh, mass timber construction. Here is uh, uh, the rendering of the uh, building facade itself. Um, it, it, it's, it's, we still don't know yet exactly what kind of uh, material uh, it, it, it might be. Uh, there's some discussion about perhaps a charred wood or maybe some other non-combustible material. But uh, the, the two exterior walls that are facing the two streets 
are, are, are pretty um, open and transparent, uh, supposed to really showcase the wood construction. Here is looking uh, up the facade, and you can see that there, there is a setback, and then the building continues up, and then there's maybe one or two other setbacks. The interior of the building, you can see the C, uh, exposed CLT floor uh, and the uh, post and beam uh, glue lamp construction with uh, columns there. It's very, very airy, very open. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful design. So now getting into the technical piece of it, um, just to give you a little background about the New York City code uh, setup. Uh, back in 2005, 2006, we started reviewing the, in the ICC code and we were looking at the 2003 version and by 2008, we uh, were able to uh, adopt the entire, uh, well, almost the entire family of ICC code. Uh, so that became the 2008 uh, New York City construction code. And then by 2009, um, we were uh, looking at the 2009 version of the, uh, I, the, the, I, the I code, and at the end that became the 2014 New York City construction codes. So this project is being reviewed under the 2014 New York City construction codes. So looking at chapter six, uh, of course, intuitively, we just go straight to the uh, timber piece, right? So we look under type four, and what it does is that it says the exterior walls are supposed to be non-combustible materials. Uh, and then there's like a, a chart that comes with it, uh, basically providing a comparison between solid sawn uh, lumber versus glue lamb. Uh, but there's, no, there's nothing for CLT at that point because um, like I told you before, we were looking at the 2009 IBC. Uh, currently, it's in the 2015 IBC in terms of the CLT equivalent. So we, we can't look at the CLT as of right based on uh, what, what you see in the 2015. There are a couple of uh, additional requirements in New York City in terms of R2 occupancy, which, one, which this one will be. We are looking at exterior walls, firewalls, exit passageways, and shaft, and close, shaft enclosures being uh, non-combustible. And there's this distinct thing that I don't know if it exists in other uh, municipalities is we have this thing called fire districts. So we are dealing with a, uh, a, a, you know, some additional uh, restrictions in terms of buildings uh, within the fire district. So as you can see, New York City is a very dense, densely constructed populated city. Um, when something happens to one building uh, it can easily affect the adjacent building or sometimes, you know, the entire block, uh, like the recent crane accident. Uh, so we, we, we care a lot about uh, fire spread issue. Um, New York City is, uh, it's consists of, uh, you know, five boroughs, uh, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Staten Island. Um, so the, the concept of fire district is not new. Um, when we, I, I, I actually found this piece of information, we had this uh, in the colonial laws of New York, and that was back in 1766, when they start, first started talking about uh, anything that is southward of fresh water should be made of stone or brick or roofed with tile or slate. So back then there was this concern already about uh, 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 fire. So we have what we call the fire districts. Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn are all completely within fire districts. Um, Staten Island and Queens, they are partially within fire districts. So here is a sample map showing uh, what Queens look like. The gray out area is within the fire district uh, versus the, 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 the white part is uh, outside of the fire district. So looking at table 503, this is our version in the 2014 code. We started with type four construction, uh, heavy timber construction. We are looking at six stories and uh, a little bit over 20,000 square feet uh, per story under the R2 occupancy. And um, in terms of the fire district, you can see the light gray uh, means you cannot actually use that construction uh, in the fire district. 
and the darker gray means you cannot have it in a fire district without sprinkler system. So that's how it's set up. Um, so if, when looking at 504.2 in terms of sprinkler increase, uh, typically you can gain more height and gain more stories by providing a sprinkler system. In terms of group R building, uh, there is a restriction, uh, no more than 60 feet tall, no more than six stories tall, uh, whichever is, 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 is lower. So, but this is in terms of using the NFPA 13R system. So if the building is using NFPA 13 system, then we have more leeway, but still, you are looking at a one story increase and 20 feet. And like I said, the building uh, being proposed is that 10 story tall and 120 feet high. So where do we go from there? Well, we, we have to skip all the way to type 1B construction. That seems to be the next logical uh, category. And um, I, I think a couple of speakers uh, before already uh, did that comparison. I think one speaker yesterday uh, analyzing a, a, a composite concrete and timber construction actually thought about creating a new subcategory under type four construction uh, and call it composite timber construction. And what he did was actually cut and paste the type 1B allowances and pasted that over the type 4 composite construction. So I think we all have the same sort of uh, logic going on here that type 1B seems to be uh, a good candidate because it allows you, at least in New York City, 160 feet total height and uh, un unlimited in, in terms of number of stories and square footage. But um, so, how do you get there? Type one and type two construction, we are really talking about non-combustible material. This is very clear in the code. And um, in order to, to qualify as non-combustible material, it has to go through ASTM E136 uh, for the non-combustibility test. And obviously, uh, wood will not, will not meet that requirement. Um, so, straddling between type four construction and type one B construction, there's this gap that needs to be filled. So, what we're looking at is what's lacking. I, I, is, it, is it really only the issue of combustible material? Uh, is there any sort of additional safety issues that, that we need to look at? Uh, if so, uh, what are those issues, and how do we address or mitigate or compensate those weaknesses? Those are the things that uh, we, are, we, we are asking. So traditionally, when you look at non-combustible construction, it's pretty straightforward. Pres prescriptive code requirements are already there for you. There's already very well-established uh, records and data in terms of ASTM E119 fire resistance rated testing. Um, so it's a given you're basically uh, getting bumped up to unlimited height versus when you're dealing with like ma uh, things like mass timber, uh, it's not that well established. There's no prescriptive code requirement, at least in our jurisdiction. And uh, in terms of comparing the fire rating to uh, non-combustible material, how does it work in the ASTM E119 environment? So this, this whole thing sort of, the, it's, it's, there's an imbalance between treat, treating the two uh, materials in terms of allowing the building height. So in terms of the lack of prescriptive code requirement, uh, we're glad that the ICC uh, board approved the ad hoc committee to uh, uh, take a closer look at that. They actually named in their uh, uh, press release about the buildings that are, are being proposed in Portland, New York City, and Minneapolis. So, we are looking at our own administrative code section. Uh, it, it, it basically says matters that are not provided for in the code, the commissioner has the ability to make a determination uh, on a specific case to find out how to treat it. And the way we're gonna do this is to uh, utilize the alternative method uh, provision. Uh, by doing this, we are asking for uh, tests to be performed uh, to our satisfaction. 
uh, we need to know how, how, uh, how well they do uh, under some extreme condition. So it's really about understanding the risk. And um, so the project team uh, has approached us uh, a number of times to work with us to answer questions, not just DOB, not just Department of Buildings, but also uh, the Fire Department of the City of New York, FDNY. Uh, the reason is because FDNY obviously is gonna be the first responder to the building. They have to be familiar with this new building uh, should they have to uh, uh, operate on the building in the future uh, when there's an incident. So uh, it's important to really get everybody on board. Uh, so at this point, we're still trying to understand the materials, the science of the material, uh, the capability of the material, and the risk of the material. So for the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that, that have been raised by a number of people uh, among the two agencies. So the first item is the material behavior uh, during fire. So we, we have seen studies and charts showing uh, fire testing, and one thing that caught our attention is the uh, initial growth rate of the fire. There seems to be a spike early on. I would say about between five to 10 minutes, the temperature got really hot. So we want to understand uh, what happened right there. Is the, uh, are the occupants going to have enough time to get out of the building in a safe manner? Uh, what about the firefighters when they get in? How does that affect them? Uh, we want to understand the flash over uh, rate because there seems to be this um, continuous flash over when there are multiple exposed walls. And it's, it's almost like one wall uh, it's feeding uh, the other wall to continue to continue to burn, and we want to understand what the effects are. Um, we want to know, in terms of fire testing, we are not only interested in just the single component being tested. We want to know overall with the connections that are being designed, how does it work as, as a system? We want to know when the column is supporting the floor, how, how would that work when, when it undergoes a fire? Uh, is, it, is, it, is it going to shift more load to another component? How does it work? Uh, where, where are the fuel loads within the building? Do you have the fuel storage, say, you know, somewhere in the building? Is it gonna be, uh, is it gonna present any hazard or problem? Um, safety during emergencies. Uh, we need to ensure that the occupants have enough time to escape, to come out of the building when there's an emergency. How are they gonna be notified? Uh, it's, is the fire origin gonna be contained within certain compartments, allowing other occupants to get out? So just so you know, for a typical R2 residential building in, in uh, New York, there's, uh, the, 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 the fire alarm system is very different than the hotel fire alarm system. So if the, if the smoke alarm goes off in one of the apartments, it's not going to alert the next door apartment. It's, it's only within that apartment. So how does that work uh, in terms of this building? Should we treat it differently or should we, should we treat the same? Uh, in terms of firefighting, does the staircase provide a safe refuge uh, an efficient way for the fire department to get up to the building to rescue people or to fight the fire. Uh, when, when, you, when you are talking about having a CLT wall as the shaft enclosure, uh, does it offer the same safety uh, as a traditional non-combustible shaft? What about the elevator shaft? Can it be CLT elevator shaft? because fire department can very well bring equipment because it's, a, it's supposed to be a pretty tall building, 10 stories. They are definitely going to be using the elevator to get up to the higher floors or bringing people with disabilities down the elevator, through the elevator. Moisture control, uh, there's been a lot of discussion about this and that's also what's in our minds as well. Uh, during construction, how do you um, uh, mitigate the moisture issue? How do you control that? 
even during construction, we are concerned uh, because that is actually when everything are not in place, not ready. Uh, you can talk about an NFPA 13 system, but during construction, it's not there yet. Standpipe connection, uh, fire detection, uh, even in terms of the staircase itself. How does it work in terms of an unfinished CLT shaft enclosure for the staircase? Uh, is it going to present a danger or uh, a path that is not feasible for the fire department to use during construction? And who is watching over uh, the construction site to make sure uh, there's no funny business? Uh, exterior walls. Uh, we, like I said in the beginning, and you have seen in the beginning, the exterior walls are, 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 are proposed to be some sort of wood, uh, wood material. Uh, we still have some um, uh, reservation about having the exterior walls exposed that way, because like I said in the beginning, New York City is a very densely populated city, and per code, it's really supposed to be non-combustible material. Concealed spaces and penetrations, uh, 10 stories tall buildings, uh, we have to find a way to, to, to make sure that uh, all those joints uh, where the wall meets the floor, all those things are tight so that there's no danger presented. But until then, we are really just looking at a very simple one-story building. On, uh, you know, when we find out more about uh, the answer to all these questions, then maybe we can look at a, a tall building, uh, tall timber building in New York City. Thank you.